That's what I'm talking about, baby. We got Junkyard Dog tonight. Listen, apparently, I was one game too late because earlier yesterday, I posted a video saying how Duncan Robinson was going to become one of the most important players in the Miami Heat with Tyler here, Rad, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and Duncan stunk it up yesterday versus the Atlanta Hawks. But fast forward 24 hours, and the leading scorer in the damn game is Duncan Robinson with a cool 26 points, and he shot just 4 7 from 3. So you're telling me the man hit four threes that comes to 12 points, but he had 26 total. The man was doing everything out there. And that's so I can tell y'all, all of y'all that said, oh, why is Duncan taking layups? Why is he driving? Why is he doing backdoor cuts? We pay him $90 million to be a shooter. Take three point shots. And I told y'all after the Hawks win yesterday, that's stupid. Because I said, the more versatile you can become as a player, if you're anybody, the more benefits every single player on the team. If they, if they not only have to guard you at the three-point line now, but have to watch you when you're cutting, watch you when you're driving, that means that your defender has to stick with you. They have to shadow you, and that opens up the court for everyone else. And that's why I love to see this, this amazing leap that we're seeing from Duncan Robinson. It's really encouraging that he's had another jump this season because he was terrible last season. Complete dog water, no other way to spin it. And I actually had someone in my comments last, last video when I was talking about this saying, oh, Duncan wasn't that bad last season. No, he was terrible. 33% from three on high volume is awful. And they say, oh, well, Duncan was hurt. No, he messed up his thumb. And when he was healthy enough to come back, he didn't play because of how terrible he was before. Because when he wasn't hitting shots, he was a liability on defense. But so far this season, he is cooking on, dare I say, both ends of the floor. He even had a, a big play late in the game where he looked like he had bodied Sohan and they, they called a foul on Duncan. The, the refs always hold Duncan Robinson, but he was standing his ground with a 6'9 Jeremy Sohan. Oh, Duncan was awesome tonight. And he continues what was what, what is to be a very, very great start to the regular season. But let's talk about this game a little bit versus Spurs, right? Of course, second night of a back-to-back, -back, you do get the return of Jimmy Butler, which is nice to see. Uh, he was out yesterday with the personal issues, so you hope everything is all right there. Now, Jimmy didn't look super impactful tonight. Now, he didn't finish with 19 points somehow. It was a quiet 19 points, although he did have a big mid-range fade in the fourth quarter when the Spurs kept trading baskets, and I'm on the edge of my seat like it's the NBA Finals versus them back in 2013, 2014. That's what it felt like. I don't know why I'm into the regular season as much as I am now. Maybe it's just because it, the team looks exciting. You feel like they have a different breath of fresh air than they did last season. And maybe it's because Tyler Hero's out. I don't want to say the team is better than Tyler Hero, but I will admit it seems to be trending in a direction where Tyler Hero doesn't play and they seem to perform better. That's all I'm going to say because that's factual. I'm not going to say it in opinion because it does sound crazy saying that the Heat are better without their efficient 25 point per game score so far this season. And they were playing okay before Tyler Hero got hurt. They were on a winning streak, yes. But it just seems like the level of ball movement without Tyler Hero is way better. Now, even in this game when the Heat started sh shooting the ball terrible to start the game, they were getting really, really great looks. It's just shots didn't fall. So we'll start with the beginning of the game. Nice to see Jimmy Butler back now. He wasn't aggressive, but I do want to note this nasty dunk he had when he was driving in the paint. Went on three Spurs defenders. That's what I love to see. When I saw that, I saw it, it still looked to me like Jimmy was like, all right, enough of this. I want to win this game. And I like seeing that from Jimmy Butler in the regular season because we know we don't get much of that in the regular season. I'm not going to complain. A lot of people do because they say, oh, we, we might miss the playoffs. We need playoff Jimmy now. Can't wait to the playoffs or you might miss it like you almost did last year. And I say that's true. But if we're going to keep getting God mode Jimmy in the playoffs, I don't care what he does in the regular season as long as they're winning games. And of course, now at six and four, the Heat are not in a giant hole like they started the season in. But anyways, they started the game in a giant hole. Couldn't hit nothing. Spurs are going off, uh, except when Benyama, he was pretty much kept in check all night. Uh, did hit a couple threes in the fourth quarter to boost his stats a little bit. He finished with 18. But for the most part, he was getting outplayed by Jaime Hawkins. I'm just going to come out and say it right there. Uh, but Devin Vassell was going off. Keldon Johnson was going off. The Heat found, found themselves down as much as 19, I believe. But then you go to the third quarter and you get the lead us, Kevin. Which is, of course, what they were all saying last year in the playoffs when Kevin Love was playing really well in stretches. And Kevin Love had 12 third quarter points, which kind of really led that comeback. Now, again, both teams were going kind of back and forth. Nobody could really get a stop, which was annoying. But the Heat did cut it to a, I think it was actually a three-point lead at halftime and a two-point uh, lead or two-point deficit, I should say, uh, for the Heat going into the fourth quarter. 
Now, I was frustrated because immediately after the fourth quarter started, the Heat were like already down 12 to 14 again. And I looked up the fourth quarter stats for the Heat this year because we know they've been terrible. And sure enough, they were they are the 29th team this season in fourth quarter differential. So, so, so second to last. And surprisingly, the team that is in last is the Phoenix Suns. And that's, of course, surprising because, you know, KD been there pretty much all year. I know Beal's missed a ton of time and Book has missed a ton of time. But still, when you have Kevin Durant, you don't expect to be such a poor fourth quarter team. But regardless, the Suns were 30th and the Heat were 29th. And keep in mind, the Heat had outscored the Bucks by like 20 in the fourth quarter earlier this year. So if you take out that game, that anomaly, I'm sure the Heat are dead last in fourth quarter margin. But anyways, all of that to say the Heat have not been a good fourth quarter team. You know this because they always blow these big leads. So I'm starting to get a little disappointed watching the game. I'm saying this is what happens when you're the Heat and you can't and you don't have a lead going into the fourth quarter. Now you get outscored and the game ends up being uh, all that or not all that close. But Duncan Robinson says, screw what you got to say, man. I'm going to come back and I'm going to lead my team to win. That, of course, in addition to Bam and Abile, who was awesome today. Absolutely awesome. So we're going to go through this box and kind of talk about everyone a little bit here. Jimmy Butler, nice to see him do enough to win. That's all I'm going to ask for him, and I'm going to leave it at that. Hayward Highsmith, 26 minutes, zero points, only shot four times. Uh, I'm surprised to see he only had zero points because I felt like his impact this game was awesome. Now, he got killed by Zach Collins. A lot of that is when Highsmith was switched on to Zach Collins, but I can't blame Highsmith for that. Sp I, I was going to say Spo shouldn't put Highsmith in that position, really look who the heat have on the roster the only bigger guys as far as size they got is bam thomas bryant i guess orlando robinson but he's not going to play in these games and maybe kevin love maybe uh and obviously you can't play all three of those guys a lot or at the same time so high high smith is going to play a lot of minutes now he only played i guess uh what did i say 26 minutes tonight so not a ton and maybe that is because of the length that the spurs provide because they're starting a 6-9 jeremy sohan at point guard in addition to Zach Collins, in addition to Wembenyama. So maybe that's why Vic didn't play as, or Highsmith didn't play as much. Uh, wow, he finished a minus 20. That's wild. Am I the only one watching the game that, that felt like Highsmith was very solid defensively? Now, he got hold again by the rest a couple times because they can't believe he's as good a defender as he is. But if you look at this starting lineup, you had Jimmy was a plus 14, Highsmith a minus 20, Bam a minus 10, and then Duncan Robinson a plus 22. That's just crazy differentials in the starting lineup there. Uh, but I feel like Highsmith was solid. We know plus minus can be kind of a, a wonky stat, uh, but I feel like he was solid. Uh, but you did get another great game for Bam. He's been rebounding the hell out of the ball. Had 47 combined rebounds in his last three games. Added another, another 11 tonight with six assists, with three steals, and 24 blocks. And shooting an efficient 10 of 20 and doing all his mid-range stuff. So another great game for Bam. The more he can string these together, the, the less cautiously optimistic I am and the more optimistic optimistic I am. But it's it's still going to take a while because Bam didn't really tell off till the second half of last season. Uh, so I kind of want to see him sustain this level of play for a full season. And even this level of play is better than what we saw last year for Bam. So he has been super encouraging as well. Speaking of encouraging, let's talk about Duncan Robinson just a little bit more because he has these two specific plays that I want to show y'all right now. One was the Smitty. Ooh, the Jordan on Patrick Ewing, the little fake behind the back drive baseline. Oh, it was beautiful. That's a, mu that's a move that I like to do a lot myself uh, out there on the court because uh, I'm, not I'm not athletic. I'm not fast. I can't run. I can't jump. So I got to have all these little tricks and fakes to get to the rim. That's one of the moves I put in my bag. Of course, you know, uh, I guess popularized by Steve Smith, who used to play for the Miami Heat. So that's someone I've watched. Of course, got that in my bag. Uh, and he was awesome there. And Duncan Robinson had a nasty pump fake. James Harden probably travels. Step back three, pump fake again. Monster three in the fourth quarter to either cut the lead or give the Heat a lead. Uh, he was just so good and so versatile out there. Uh, let's talk about Josh Richardson. As Will Manso points out in this hilarious tweet that we all were screaming, no, 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 no. As soon as Jay Rich pulled those last two shots, guilty, that was me. But Jay Rich hit the monster three to give the Heat a lead. And then came the very next possession, little tough step back midi uh, to kind of seal, uh, seal the deal there, make it a two possession game. Uh, and it was nice seeing Jay Rich get hyped, man. They said that the Spurs gave him a video montage, which I thought was hilarious because he only played like 63 games for them. 
The Heat only do video montages if you want to ring for them, and that's how it should be. But good for the Spurs. We know they're a class organization. We know Jay Rich is a, is a class guy. And it was nice to see him hit the big shots when it matters, particularly because he's been shooting terrible to start the year. But he was good last game too. So we'll, we'll say that's a two solid games in a row for Jay Rich as he did shoot 57% for tonight. We got to talk about Hame, Hame, Hawkins Jr. That dude can do everything out there on the basketball court except shoot threes. He's still not a great three-point shooter, although I do believe he hit one today. He was one for two, so 50% there. Uh, did finish the night with 11 points, six rebounds, three assists, three steals, and a block. One block. So you know he's doing out there on the defensive end too. So when I say he can do everything, I literally mean everything. And again, only what I say, like four assists tonight, but the way that he finds, or three assists tonight, but his vision is impeccable. Even on that Jay Rich monster dagger, as soon as he touched the ball, he immediately caught and swung it right to the open guy. That kind of vision is the type of stuff you see from a, you know, an older vet with a high IQ. Now we know Hawkes is a four-year college guy, 22 years old, but that's still young in the grand scheme of the league. And to make these type of passes have that kind of vision is awesome. And whoever said that he was unathletic after the Heat drafted him clearly doesn't watch basketball. I mean, we saw that breakaway two-handed back scratcher dunk he had uh, earlier today. Absolutely just beautiful. Who else we got about here? We got Kevin Love. Only played 14 minutes. Didn't really check back in after the strong third quarter. But the Heat obviously needed that. And I think Kevin Love is one of those guys who's going to be more important come playoff time. Not as important now. So if you can kind of get him 15 minutes a night so his body is ready for the playoffs, uh, that's kind of what I would love to see. Uh, and then Drew Smith played 26 minutes. Uh, very frustrated me a ton. Uh, now, when you look at the numbers, he was 4-9, had 12 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists. So the numbers are fine. But maybe I'm just nitpicking because I have this uh, bias against him for some reason, just because I don't think he's very good. But I'm not alone on that, right? So it's not like I'm a hater because a lot of Heat fans feel that way. But I'm going to give him his credit because down the stretch, he did hit some big shots, had a big layup, had the big three in the corner, and those are shots that he desperately needed. Now, uh, the only other Heat player that played was Thomas Bryant. Five minutes, did nothing. Uh, from the Spurs side of things, uh, Keldon Johnson was awesome as always. 20, 12, and 6. He's going to be a great player. And Devin Vassell was the most impressive to me. Only had 14 points, but he always hit the monster three whenever there was like a big Miami miss swing down the court or Miami was on a run and the, and the heat needed to stop. Devin Vassell always hit the big shot. And between him, Keldon Johnson, obviously Wen Minyama, who was, you know, finished okay stats-wise today, but he only shot 8 of 22, so he wasn't efficient. They have an amazing young core between those guys. And they're going to be a, they're going to be a really great team. Uh, for, for a long time. And Jeremy Sohan, I guess you can include in that. He had 16 points today. Uh, whether he's the, the future starting point guard, I don't know. Probably not. Probably when Trey Jones is back and healthy and, and he's uh, he's uh, recovered from his hamstring issue, he'll probably be the point guard, which will help Wembenyama even more because they did miss Wembenyama a ton. I think he can get a lot more easier looks than he did. A lot of Wembenyama shots were tough fadeaways and he took nine threes. Uh, you'd like to see him take more inside uh, if you're a Spurs fan, but I'm not. So I really don't care. Uh, but that's all I got to say about this game. So Tuesday, the Heat play another stupid in-season tournament game on the road versus Charlotte Hornets. You better win that game because that team sucks. And that'll put the Heat three games above 500. So you're starting to stack on these wins just like I wanted to see. But that's all I got for this video. So most importantly, like the last video did awesome. And that's because y'all comment and like and subscribe. So the algorithm pushes this out to everyone, which is greatly appreciated uh, by me because I work very hard on these videos. We're less than 80 su or 90 subs away from 3K. So make sure to subscribe if y'all are not already. And comment down below your thoughts on just the team as a whole. Do you think they're better without Tyler Hero? Are you hopeful on how many hotkeys? Are you wondering where the hell Nikola Jovic is? Because I am. But let me know what y'all think down below. I respond and read to every comment that I can. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace out. Look, pull up in the city, trying to get that dead fast. Like, do it on my own, I don't need no dead weight. Like, had to kill him off, yeah, I need a headspace. You know this homegrown bitch don't offend me. Hmm.